Hello, Kyle Munyon here with uh, Lesson 7-1. Uh, today we're going to be covering parallel and perpendicular lines. Uh, focus today on naming angle pairs on um, lines cut by a transversal and then knowing the relationships for lines cut by a transversal, uh, parallel lines cut by a transversal. So uh, our learning targets, make sure that we can identify uh, obviously all the different types of angle pairs if we haven't learned them already and then make conjectures about the relationships uh, of the angles formed by parallel lines cut by a transversal. Uh, so we have quite a few goals here today, uh, important goals. that We're definitely going to be using them a lot later on. All right, so uh, the first thing that we come across, Matt works for a company, uh, laying some patio bricks. He's going to use some parallel lines here to help him. Uh, go ahead and read these first two paragraphs, and then we'll skip down to the bottom. Okay, so here's a diagram of the situation. Uh, we see that we have a gas line that is intersecting uh, two lines that he laid out here. So uh, we have some parallel lines that he created, and there's a gas line running through intersecting those. That gas line is called our transversal. The definition of a transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. So here we have the gas line is intersecting two or more lines at different points. Uh, to be extra clear, um, this is not a transversal. It is intersecting two lines. Uh, all of these are intersecting two lines, but not at different points. So that would not be considered a transversal. It has to be intersecting two or more lines at different points. All right, so uh, from here, uh, we need to make sure that we could identify with a protractor. Uh, hopefully you know how to use a protractor. If not, go to Khan Academy and uh, there is practice with using an actual protractor on your computer that you can do uh, finding the measure of angles. So basically go to Khan Academy, look up uh, find angles using a protractor and you should be able to get some good practice. So I already went ahead and measured these. Uh, measure of angle 1 is 115 degrees. Measure of angle 2 is 65 degrees, and those are a linear pair, so they should add up to 180, and they do. Measure of angle 3 is 115. Measure of angle 4 is 65 degrees. Measure of angle 5 was 115. 6 was 65. 7 was um, 65 and 8 was 115. Okay, so from here uh, it tells us, reminds us the gas line is a transversal because it's intersecting uh, both of the string lines that we created at different points. So it wants us to uh, name the angle pairs formed by these lines that match the description. So for corresponding angles we have the definition uh, down here. Uh, an easier way would just be on two different intersections on a transversal they're in the exact same spot. So what do I mean by the exact same spot? So for example, angle 1 is in the top left of this intersection over here. So notice in the top left is angle 1. If I go to the other intersection on the top left, that would be angle 5. So angle 1 and 5 are a pair of corresponding angles. 2 and 6 are also in the same spot, top right, top right, so angle 2 and angle 6. See if you can find some more, 4 and 7. Oops. And uh, another one we could do would be angle 3 and 8. Those are all considered pairs of corresponding angles. Uh, next one we need to identify is same side. We only need two pairs of same side interior angles. So here's the definition of same side interior angles. Obviously you can read over that. Uh, but same side is referring to same side of the transversal. So here if I look at the gas line being the transversal, notice angles 2, 3, 6, and 8 are all on the right side of that transversal. However, if you have just one intersection, so let's say we're looking at the top up here, angles 2 and 3 already have a name. That's called a linear pair. So we want one angle from two different intersections. 
to be on the same side. So we could say like angle two and angle six, but those also already have a name. Those are called corresponding. So the other part of this tells us where to look. So the same side is referring to the transversal. The interior part is referring to the parallel lines in this case. Interior means inside, exterior would be outside. So same side interior angles need to be two angles that are on the same side of the transversal. On the interior of the two inner, uh, parallel lines uh, on two different intersections. So angle 3 and 8, they're both on the same side of the transversal and they're on the in, uh, excuse me, 3 and 6 are on the same side of the transversal and both on the interior. So we could say angle 3 and angle 6 are same side interior. If we looked on the other side, the left side of the transversal, we could say angles 4 and 5 are another pair of same side interior angles. For alternate interior, it's the same thing except for alternate means uh, on opposite sides. So if I told you to alternate turns, I'd mean go back and forth switching turns. So alternate sides of the transversal means one's on one side, the other's on the other side. Uh, interior, we're still going to be looking at the interior of the parallel lines. So three, four, five, and six are interior angles. So if I wanted to find a pair of alternate interior, pick one of those, like four, go to the alternate side on the interior, and I see angle six is alternate interior angle. So angle four and angle six are alternate interior. Three and five are alternate interior angles as well. So based on our answers to one and two, what kind of conjecture can you make about the angle um, pair formed by the parallel lines cut by the transversal? Well, what do you notice about all of the pairs of corresponding angles that we came up with? One and five. So 115, 115. Hey, those are congruent. Four and seven. So four and 7. Hey, those were both 65. 3 and 8. 3 was 115. 8 was 115. So it looks like all of our corresponding angles are congruent on parallel lines. So corresponding angles on parallel lines cut by a transversal are congruent. I use a symbol or we can write it out. Congruent. What about same side interior angles? So 3 and 6. Let's look at those. 3 is 115. 6, 65, not congruent. Those are actually add up to 180. Those are supplementary. What about 4 and 5? 4. You got here 65. 5 is 115. Those are also supplementary. So same side interior angles are supplementary. I don't have a symbol for supplementary, but uh, both pairs there were supplementary. And alternate interior angles, let's look at 4 and 6. So 4 was 65, 6 was 65, those are congruent. 3 and 5, notice here 3 and 5 are both 115, those are congruent. So alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, so interestingly, just like at one intersection, you could have a linear pair that's supplementary, or you could have vertical angles that are congruent. Whenever you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, you could have some angle pairs that are congruent and some angle pairs that are supplementary. A real easy way to remember this part when you're looking at two different intersections is this right here. Same side angles are supplementary. Uh, the rest of them are congruent. Corresponding angles on parallel lines cut by transversal are congruent, and alternate interior angles on parallel lines cut by a transversal are congruent. Easiest way to remember uh, when you have more than one intersection, the ones that are supplementary starts with an S. All right, so here we're going to be drawing our own transversal, measuring the angles, and then uh, naming them. Uh, okay, Let's, I'm just going to draw a line here. Not perfect. Uh, let's call this line L, A, and B, just so we have a name here. And it does say these are parallel lines. I'm going to go ahead and mark on my figure using these extra set of airheads to indicate that they're parallel. Uh, it says number the angles form. So I'm going to go ahead and number all of these angles that I just created. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
find the measure of each angle. So let's say I measured these, angle one, I get 35. That's a vertical angle, four is also gonna be 35. Corresponding angle on parallel lines are congruent, so one and five are congruent, so five also has to be 35 degrees. And then angle eight. All of those are actually 35 degrees. And I just measured one of them, and I used vertical angles, corresponding angles, um, to identify the rest of the angles that were 35 degrees. On the other side, um, I get 145 degrees. I don't even know how accurate this is. It doesn't matter because uh, if we had a protractor, we could measure them. But uh, angle 2, 3, 6, and 7. Are all 145 degrees. If I measured angle 2 and got 145, uh, I, I don't even have to measure it actually because I know it's a linear pair with 1 has to add up to 180. From there, if I know angle 2 is 40, uh, 145 degrees, vertical angles tell me that angle 3 is going to be 145. Corresponding angles tell me angle 7 is going to be 145. And then vertical angles again tell me angle 6. So I actually didn't even have to measure any of them. I knew one angle. It's the only one I measured. And then I could find 4, 5, 8 using vertical angles and corresponding. I could use linear pair to figure out angle two, and then I can also figure out using vertical angles three, seven, and six. Do the answers that we came up with confirm the conjectures? Yeah, all of the corresponding angles are congruent. One and five, they're congruent to each other. Uh, 35 degrees. Uh, two and six, those are both 145 degrees. Um, alternate interior angles. 3 and 6, those are congruent to each other. Those are both 145. 4 and 5, those are congruent to each other. So alternate interior angles are congruent. Basically, all of our uh, conjectures are true that we came up with earlier. This is just some more evidence. All right. Uh, on the next question, um, here we're going to write some postulates in if-then form, in conditional statement form. So hopefully you guys remember from lesson 3, that conditional statements are statements that can be written in the form if-then. We can actually write some of our definitions, and in this case, postulates and theorems in if-then form as well. So based on your earlier conjecture, write a corresponding angle postulate in if-then form. If parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. I just use the congruency symbol there. Uh, do we need to prove that this postulate is true before we can use it? Uh, no, it told us that it's a postulate, and we know that postulates are accepted as true without proof. So we don't need to prove it if it's a postulate. Postulates are accepted as uh, proof, are accepted as true even without proof. All right. For the other two, uh, these are actually theorems. It says the alternate interior angle theorem and the same side interior angle theorem also involves angle form. Uh, based on your earlier conjecture, write these theorems in if-then form. So if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And um, the next one, the same side interior angle theorem, if pair lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. All right, 
moving on, we now have some check your understanding questions and then one more proof and we should be able to get some practice uh, for this one. So I'd like you guys to pause here and see if you guys are able to uh, answer questions 11, uh, 8 through 11. Uh, in just a moment, I'll start talking again. I'll explain these in case you got stuck on them. So go ahead and pause now. All right, hopefully you took a moment, paused, tried to do some of these, and let's go ahead and go over them. Question eight, uh, it does tell us at the top that in the diagram, L, line L and M are parallel. So I'll go ahead and they look parallel, but I'll just go ahead and mark it so we know for sure. Explain how we know that four and six are same side interior angles. So looking at four and six, I see that the transversal right here, uh, let's call this T. The transversal T has angles on the left side and right side. Same side would be all the ones that uh, are on the either the left side or the right side of that. So one, four, six, and seven are all on the same side. Uh, we're looking for same side interior. So four and six are on the interior or inside of the parallel lines. So four and six are on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the left side and they're both on the interior of the parallel lines. For number nine, uh, our two and three corresponding angles, explain how we know. Uh, no, those are not corresponding because they're not on two different intersections. Um, two and three do have a name. Those are called a linear pair. Uh, the relationship is they're supplementary, uh, but I know for sure that they are not uh, corresponding because it's only on one intersection. Corresponding angles have to be on two different intersections. So what is corresponding with two? Five would be the corresponding angle with two. Um, number five, uh, excuse me, number 10, if measure of angle five is 65 degrees, go ahead and label that one on there, 65 degrees, what is the measure of angle four, support our answer. Uh, because these are parallel lines, I can identify 4 and 5 as having a name and a relationship. 5 is on the right side, 4 is on the left, so these are alternate. They're both on the interior and on two different intersections, so these are alternate interior angles that should be congruent. So measure of angle 4 should equal 65 degrees because of the alternate interior angle theorem. Uh, for number 11, it uh, tells us that angle BCD and angle CGE are corresponding. Oh, we're not even using this diagram. So BCD and CGE are corresponding. Angles formed by two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Given that we have the measure, have the measure complete the following. All right, well, even if I don't have a diagram, what do I know about corresponding angles on parallel lines cut by a transversal? Corresponding angles are going to be congruent, so these two angles are congruent, which means their measure should be equal. All I should have to do is set these equal to each other. So angle BCD is going to equal angle CGE, or 3x plus 6 equals x plus 24. Subtract x from both sides. Subtract 6 from both sides, x equals 9 is what we come up with for that first question. What is the measure of angle B, C, D? We can definitely plug it back in. So 3 times 9 is 27 plus 6 is 33. If I wanted to check just to make sure, um, if I plug in a 9 here, 9 plus 24 is 33. They are congruent like they're supposed to be. So both of the angles are 33 degrees. Oops, I guess you should put the degree symbol on there. Explain how we found our answers. Well, we, I kind of explained the steps that we went through. Because they're corresponding, I know I can set them equal. If they were supplementary, I don't set them equal. I have to show that they add up to 180 degrees. So these were corresponding. We set them equal. If they were same side interior, we could set them up as supplementary angle uh, one plus angle two adds up to equal 180. 
All right, here we have one more proof and then some lesson practice. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Number 12, complete the following proof of the same side interior angle theorem. So uh, always proofs should start off with given information, and that is given, so I know my reason is going to be given. Angle 1 is equal to angle 5 from the corresponding angle postulate. That's true. Um, and then on the next one, we know that the values are equal by definition of congruence. If the angles are congruent, then the measures are going to be equal. So definition of congruence or congruent. Uh, for the next one, it says that measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 4 equals 180. That would be the linear pair postulate. I know these are going to add up to 180 because they're a linear pair. Now we don't need to put the postulate. Just linear pair will work. And then how do I know that angle 4 plus, excuse me, measure of angle 5 plus measure of angle 4 equals 180? Um, because I substituted in, if I know these values are equal right here, um, if 1 equals 5 and 1 plus 4 equals 180, then 5 plus 4 has to equal 180. That's the substitution. I substituted in 5 because I know it's equal to 1. So I, instead of 1, I put angle 5. And the last one is always going to be what you're trying to prove. So measure angle 4, excuse me, angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary. All right, so conveniently, uh, we are ready for the lesson practice here. Oh, I guess we still have a couple of check your understandings here, uh, and then lesson practice. All right, um, same thing. Try these two questions. Uh, pause the video. Come back in just a moment. All right, hopefully you've tried questions 13 and 14 now. Look back at your proof in item 12. Explain that we know uh, how we know that angles 1 and 5 are corresponding. So looking at the picture 1 and 5, um, I know that 1 and 5 are corresponding because they're in the same spot on two different intersections, top left top left of two different intersections is how I know those are corresponding. Um, I'm not going to write that one down because there's not any room. For question uh, 13b, explain how that we know 4 and 5 are same side interior angles. 4 and 5 are same side interior because they're on the same side of the transversal T. They're both on the left side and on the interior of the two intersected lines M and N. So same side of the transversal on the interior of the intersected lines. For 14 says complete the proof given uh, M is parallel to N. We're trying to prove angle 4 is equal to angle 6. So we should be able to start with the given information. So let's go ahead and do that. M is parallel to N. Four is congruent to two because those are vertical angles. So vertical angle. Two is congruent to six because of the corresponding angle postulate. And on the last one we're trying to prove four is congruent to six. Uh, you could, you, if it was equals, you could use substitution, or you could just say transitive properties. Four is congruent to two, and six is congruent to two. Then four has to be congruent to six. I'm going to say transitive property on this one. Oops, transitive property. All right, so now time for the lesson practice. Uh, should be pretty easy. Pause here, try questions 15 through 20. Uh, unpause it when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, hopefully you've had some time to do questions 15 through 20. Let's check. 
Uh, here it tells us that A and B are parallel to each other. So I know these are parallel. I can go ahead and mark them with the extra set of arrowheads. Determine whether the statements are true or false and justify your response. So 2 is supplementary to 3. Uh, looks like they are because they don't look congruent. And the only option is either congruent or supplementary. Uh, but I know for sure that they are because they're same side interior angles. So that's true. They are same side interior angles. For 16, angle 8 is congruent to angle 6. So 8 and 6 are corresponding angles. Those are supposed to be congruent on parallel lines cut by a transversal. So this one is true because of corresponding angles. Corresponding angle postulate. Number 17, 7 is supplementary to 3. So looks like this is an acute angle, acute. They don't look supplementary. Um, and if I recognize what type they are, these are alternate ones on the bottom and ones on the top of the transversal. So they're on alternate sides. Interior angles. Alternate interior angles are supposed to be congruent. The statement says they are supplementary. So this is false. Uh, they look congruent, which is what they should be if uh, these are parallel lines, and it does say they are. What about 6 and 4 are congruent? So that's true because those are vertical angles on there. So I do know that that's true. All right, um, now that we're done with 18, determining they're true or false and why not, let's look at 19. Uh, if the measure of angle 2 equals blah, 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 measure of angle 3 equals blah, 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 what is the measure of angle 2 and what is the measure of angle 3? Okay, well, first thing I need to do is figure out the name relationship before I can set up an equation. So if I'm looking at angles 2 and 3, I see very quickly they don't look congruent. So if your initial instinct is to set these equal and solve, that would be wrong because uh, they don't even look congruent. But if I identify their name and the relationship, it'll tell me what the relationship is and what equation to write down. So angle 2 and 3 are on the same side on the interior uh, of the two parallel lines. So the same side of the transversal, they're both on the top. On the interior, these are same side interior angles, which are supposed to be supplementary. So I know that to solve this one, I should be able to do angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180 degrees. I should write down the relationship as they add up to 180, not that they're equal to each other. So from here, I can uh, plug in my pieces and solve 8x minus 20 plus... 5x plus 5 equals 180. So combine my like terms, 13x minus 15 equals 180. Add 15 to both sides. Last step is to divide both sides by 13, and we get x equals 15. So uh, now that we know what x is, didn't answer the question, we can just plug it back in to make sure. So uh, 120 minus 20 is 100. Um, 75 plus 5 is 80. So 100 plus 80 does equal 180. So uh, we get 100 degrees when we plug it back in and 80 degrees when I plug it back in. And they're supposed to be supplementary, so they should add up to 180. They should not be congruent or equal to each other. All right, last one, number... 20, based on your answer in item 19, what are the measure of the other numbered angles in the diagram? Uh, all of them are either going to be 180 or 100 or 80, because they're all going to either be congruent or supplementary if it's parallel lines cut by a transversal. So obviously you could identify any of the obtuse angles, ones that are more than 90, have to be 100. All of the acute angles have to be 80. All right. Uh, good luck with um, when you get to the lesson practice. Uh, let's move on to the next one, 7-2.